In this video, I'm going to show you the classic Hollywood lighting styles that I learned 25 years ago at the BBC. And Pitwell Hall here is my location. Welcome to the dining room at Pitwell Hall. It's a fantastic location. Um, you don't have to have opulent venues like this to take good Hollywood portraits, but we've got it, so we're going to use it. Um, the backgrounds we've got here, this is this zone that I'm going to shoot here now. Okay, we've got um, some candles. There's a couple of candles up here on the wall as well. Um, I'm going to use this area. I'm going to have a picture, first of all, of Jamie standing here. Um, Jamie is my sort of leading actor. It's going to be a wide shot, so he's going to be sort of more figure in the landscape, I suppose. Um, and then I'm going to bring Jamie to here, into more into the middle of the room. Maybe I might actually sit him down at the, for that point. I'm going to go for some more headshots, something a little bit tighter, maybe with a fire as a background. So we're just going to use this sort of two zones. But the first picture, I'm going to use a key light. So a light from the front, but I'm also going to use a backlight. This is going to be my backlight, this little one here. Um, I don't know how I'm going to set this yet until Jamie's in, because with backlights you've got to, and key lights, you've just got to be fine tweak them when your subject's in position. But it'll be over in this direction. Come and have a look at the key light. What I've got here, um, this, these are by, these are ARRI lights, okay? These are the, the typical 1K ARRI. Now, it's not changed that much in design since the 1930s. Of course, it's a, a much more modern fitting now, but the point is it's still got this uh, concentric rings, this Fresnel lens, um, and inside these lights are tungsten bulbs. So they are 3,200 Kelvin. It's that warm color. Uh, this lamp here is the Lupolux 1000, so it gives out a, a similar quantity of light, but it's LED. This LED technology has no heat or very, very little heat out the top, um, and it's also daylight balanced. Now, as you can see, we've got candles, and which are about 2000 Kelvin, maybe 1900. We've got the, the fireplace, about the same. So we've got a much warmer, richer feel to the, to the scene than daylight. But because I'm going to shoot in black and white, I don't mind mixing my light sources. So that's an advantage of black and white work. Um, so I'm going to use this Luplux as a key. Um, let me pan, pan it round. Let's bring it into position. It'll probably come to about here or something. Um, and if I pan that now onto the scene, you can see at the moment this light is spotted up. So if you look over at that wall there, you can see that there's a spot of light on that candle. If I flood the light out, you get less intensity, but now... The light is from here all the way across here. It's an even light. You get about 50 degrees of even light out of one of these. Um, but the problem with even light is it's boring, OK? Because life isn't as even as this type of lighting. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a scatter gel to break up the light, to give it a little bit more character. Um, and then we'll have something really worth shooting. So let's do that. So this is a scatter gel here. This is a, a, like a, a piece of plastic film with some pattern on it, designed specifically for these cool running Lupolux LED lights. They also work on the new um, ARRI LED uh, Fresnel spotlights um, as well. But you, you don't want to be putting one of these on a, an old tungsten light fitting because uh, it'll catch fire, I expect, or something. Um, but these lamps don't give out any heat, so it's absolutely fantastic. Right, I'm going to turn this power up on this light, um, up to 100%, because it's fully dimmable. And as you dim a light like this, the colour temperature stays the same, unlike the tungsten lights. As you dim down a tungsten light, the colour temperature drops, and so it becomes more orange, down into a deep red. Now, um, we're going to take control of the light in here, and the way to do that is to shut the shutters. Um, or curtains. So, because obviously in any Hollywood studio, uh, everyone's got control. A good studio or a good set is basically a black box, and all the light that ends up in that set or in that studio is, is put there for a purpose. 
So let's uh, get ourselves into a more realistic situation. Um, all the photography that I'm showing you on this uh, video production can be done in a studio or in a small room set or in a boutique hotel um, or um, a classic house like this or even in a modern apartment. You can really bring this lighting style up to date. It doesn't have to be used for a vintage thing. This light here is too shallow on me, okay, at the moment. Um, and so what I need to do is I need to get the light up. I want to have the light as though it, it feels like it's coming from a chandelier or something. So let's do that first of all. I'll bring this up a little bit. Um, and as you can see on the wall there, the pattern, as I move the light, the pattern moves, I'm going to make sure, have to make sure I find a nice bit of light for Jamie. Um, so uh, when he's in position, I'll have to pan or adjust the light to make sure I've got a nice spot on him. Okay, so let's get Jamie in, because I think we're ready to go. Oh, the light level, by the way, is nearly always 800 ISO, a 60th F4. Uh, sometimes when I'm using a real fire, I might drop it down to 2.8, which is where I think I'm going to shoot this frame, simply because you, even though the flames are quite lively there, you don't get that much exposure out of the fire. So the fire itself is setting our base exposure. Now, if I'm working at a 60th on a, maybe a 50mm lens or something, I normally use a monopod. I use a monopod anyway often just to allow me to see the image in two dimensions, uh, allow me to compose with it um, and get the shot I want. So let's get Jamie in and have a look. Jamie, can I uh, get you in here? Oh, yeah. look in you. I'm ready. Yeah, you, you scrubbed up. I've borrowed your clothes. <laughs> I think my clothes would fit you, mate. <laughs> Come over here. Wardrobe. That's quite a nice, that's, that's all right. I like that position there. And we've got all sorts of shadows. You can see there's a shadow of the candle. I'm not worried about that. Um, uh, these things are, are there in real life. If you take a look, look at uh, some classic movie scenes, you'll see that the shadows everywhere. I'm going to bring this in a little bit. I want to make sure that that um, lighting stand uh, leg isn't in my picture. But I need to find the light on you. That's on you, isn't it? Right there. Bang. Perfect. Um, where else is this light going? Let's have a think about this. Um, it's hitting this area over here um, and down here. It's not too, doing too much harm on the floor. This area here on the floor here um, is coming from that light. I can sort of see and work that out. But this is, here's a top tip. If you want to know where the light is landing on something like this, just put your finger on the floor and you can see the direction and angle of the light so you know exactly where it's coming from. Okay, let's pop this into position. Fantastic. As long as I keep this out of shot. I need to, I want to try and get those candles in the edge of my shot. So I might bring that back a little bit. So if I, the more I bring it this way, the more this light becomes a kicker. Now a kicker um, just hits the side of Jamie's face and but kicks forward as opposed to a backlight, which just provides a bit of rim light. So that will act as a bit of a kicker for me. Um, I reckon we're good to go. Get, this, get the camera. The camera I'm using here is the Fuji X-Pro1. Um, it's got a kit zoom lens on the front, um, and on the front of that zoom lens, attached to the zoom, is a filter. Now, this filter is a Tiffin Black Pro Mist. Um, it has the effect of creating a little bit of diffusion, and so we get some halation from the candles and things. It'll give it a very filmic look. Okay, so what I need to do now is just get myself set up, work out where I'm going to take the picture from. Um, I like to work with an LCD screen, with two dimensions. Um, I know that a lot of photographers love SLRs, um, but actually sometimes com converting a three-dimensional scene into two dimensions just by having a, a viewfinder like this really helps with composition, makes things easier. And I'm all, I'm all for easy, so let's do that. I know I need to come back slightly on this. This is set to 18 millimeter. I'm also gonna drop down a little bit. I like to keep the uprights upright in my scene. I don't want to have to use Photoshop to do that. So I keep the back of the camera upright. So I'm looking down to Jamie's feet, up to Jamie's face. Um, that'll work fine there. Um, I'm just using my eyes, just looking at Jamie now. I can see where he is at the moment. The key light isn't quite on him, and the backlight's just clobbering his nose. So what I'm going to do is adjust this key light and bring your face this way a little bit to there. So that sorts the backlight out, and then I'm going to just move that to there. And that sorts this bit out just to there like that. Some lovely light in your eyes. Perfect. Brilliant. That's nice. Yeah, love that. Okay, so let's just use your eyes to see the last little elements in the picture. Um, I reckon that's looking fantastic. Everything about that I love. So I'm just going to move my focus zone across. 
Oh, um, I've got my settings. Let's have a look. Where am I? 60th, 2.8, 800. And um, the important thing here is that on this analog scale on the back of the camera, it's the camera is suggesting that I'm going to take a picture and it's going to be minus a stop, ex uh, you know, minus a stop exposure. So it, the camera would increase the exposure by a stop on where it is. But I quite like it to be dark and moody because this is what we've got here. We've got ourselves a sort of a bit of an evening scene. Let's have a look at this. Perfect. Um, what I need to do now is just have a quick look in, just check it's sharp, um, and uh, make sure I've got a, a reasonable expression. This is a wide shot, so it's not going to have too much sort of in, uh, emphasis. Oh, that looks fantastic. You look amazing, Jamie. Straight off, of, straight off the silver screen, mate. Yeah, that's lovely. OK, so that's the first picture. Um, I'm happy with that. I don't need to take a second frame, because the first one was fine. Um, but Jamie is very much just part of a scene you know the, the 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 scene is much bigger than the star in this picture we need to make jamie the star so what we're going to do now is bring, i'm going to bring a chair in bring him away from the background let the background just sort of push a little bit out of focus and so the background is less significant than jamie so let's do that so i'll just switch that i'll leave that on that's fine there's a chair over here now up till now what we've done is we've used for that first picture, two lights, a key light and a kick light. But the key light had a second purpose. The key light was lighting both Jamie and the background. What we're going to do now is let the, this light here just light the background. And I don't really want the background to be as bright as it, as it is. So I'm going to pan that, turn that down on the dimmer to about 40%. Jamie, come and have a seat. Let me, uh, this throne here, let's put it that way around and I can get a little bit of backlighting onto you there. Um, and so now I've got the background is lit. This light here will work well on Jamie as a backlight to about there. Because Jamie's sitting down, I bring the light down, you know? We want to keep some elevation to the light, but to, we don't have to make it too steep. If a backlight is too steep, it'll scoot down the front of that suit and make it look like a rag. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure we keep the clothes looking fantastic. That's a good position, but we need one more light. And there's one just happens to be here. This is a really useful key light. So we can have a, a wide letterbox, or we can have a vertical letterbox, or we can take it down and have a small letterbox, or even a square. But this is fine. I just want to get a little bit of key light into here, but I don't want to be lighting the background. So that's perfect. Um, so if you look at this scene here, um, if I wanted to, let's say, light this bit of chair here, I would use the controlling doors here, this one here, just to do that, open that out, and that chair's lit. Do you see how that works? Perfect. So have a little bit of that there. Great. I get the camera, and we're good to go. OK, Jamie. Bring it to here. That's nice. Love that. If I come into there, I'm going to get a bit of fireplace in the background. Stick with the vertical. I like that, actually. If I shoot from above, it makes you less significant, less powerful, makes me all powerful, Jamie. So that's what I'm going to do, mate. I'm going to make you a bit more vulnerable. I like that. That's it. Low. Straight into camera. Nice, strong, powerful look. Yeah, love it. Perfect. Excellent. Right. Let's do a horizontal picture. The fire's still glowing away there. Once I've focused on here, um, I don't have to worry about it if I'm using the back button because um, Jamie's not moving, I'm not moving, and that's just a really nice shot. Well, I'll do one more. So we could take that a little bit wider to there. Yeah, that's it. Now, if I want to get a little bit more strength into my leading actor, I'm going to shoot from below the eye line. So I'm going to come on down because that way we get a bit more dominance, a bit more power. So you become a man of power here, okay? Um, so let's get on down. I'm down on my knees for you, mate. I'll just move that to there. Got to choose my background carefully here. I'm going to come bring the candle that side of you. Just twist your upper body around a little bit to there. That's it there. Um, yeah. Lean forward a little bit more. Yeah, that's it. That'll work well. So I've got that there. I'm going to not have the hands in the bottom of the frame. I'm going to go into here. Focus, reframe, shoot. And I have a beautiful, beautiful portrait of a very dapper man. Great. Come on, let's go and see what else we can do.